Hi guys and welcome back. Today I am going to be talking about art style, one of those really hot topics of being an artist and I love really delving into that topic and thinking about it and breaking it down. But uh, first I do want to give, of course, a thank you to the sponsor of this video. That's Skillshare. I love working with Skillshare. If you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community. They have thousands and thousands of classes where you can just break apart these different ideas and get new creative inspiration. That's what I love about it is that there's just so much content over there that is broken up into really easily digestible pieces so that I can go find these classes that are taught by really amazing people all, on all sorts of topics like, like watercolor painting and creativity and art style, but also more entrepreneurial kind of topics as well. So there's a lot of things that really just mesh well to being able to just jump off and start working on new creative ideas. And it does come out to less than $10 a month through the annual subscription, which is a great deal for how much content there is over there. And I'm excited to be able to offer a code down below in my description that will actually give you a free trial of Skillshare. So you can check that out. And that's just for the first 1000 people to use that code. So make sure to go and follow that link if you'd like to see what Skillshare is all about. And as always, I like to pick a specific class to follow along, to learn from, to jumpstart a new piece. And today I, I followed along with the class, Find Your Style, Five Exercises to Unlock Your Creative Identity from Andy J. Pizza. And I loved this class. He pre provided so many exciting insights to creativity, to being an artist and a creative and a person in general. I just found that it was very engaging and it made me really want to just think about my art style, think about where it can go. And of course it has those exercises that he talks about that were really fun to just work through. But, but yeah, it, it got me wanting to think about some of the really more positive ways of looking at your style, of mapping it out and planning on where it's going. I I find that, that when I'm thinking about style in a positive way, it, it tends to really push me to make better artwork, to go beyond my comfort zone. And, and it, it tends to come in waves, I've noticed, where I can get into a certain habit of just working in the same way for a while and it gets a little monotonous. I'm not as engaged or excited about each piece, but when I snap out of it and I start to really analyze what is happening with my style, what do I want to embrace, what things that I put into my style makes me excited to start working on a piece and excited to start the next one and to think about these new things and these new topics and where it can take me that that is when I feel by far the most creative so I just want to break that down a little bit figure it out talk about it see what uh what kind of plans I can make for myself and maybe some ideas for you guys as well if there's anything that you can take some inspiration from and put it into your own work so pretty much always when I'm wanting to work on getting better at something, it starts with looking at the work that you're doing right now. I, I feel like you can't really figure things out, plan things out, know where to go if you don't know where you actually are currently. And it's not always where you think you are. I, I've been looking at my work, thinking about what do I actually feel like I'm missing with it. And and for me, I would love to be able to move in a direction where I can have a little bit more realism in the way that I render the, the face or really any detail. But that specifically is what I've been thinking about is I would like to be able to control the level of stylization a little bit better. I love being able to have really stylized elements and and being able to have the characters look like they belong to me. So striving for realism isn't what I'm going for, but striving for having more of a realistic color palette for skins sometimes, or more of a realistic rendering of the shapes of, of the face itself, like where the shadows lie. I would love to be able to, to unlock that a little bit better. So I think that, that looking at my work, looking what I feel like I, I wish was there. That's definitely one of those things. I wish that I could get much more 
finessed and thoughtful and careful with with the little details with things that just make a character come alive and feel like she's real <laughs> so so yeah that's that's the one thing that I've been really trying to focus on more I tried to focus on it more with this piece with really just breaking down the shadow shapes building those layers up much more slowly so it gives me a chance to put more details in and and that was really exciting. I loved that approach. I loved being able to have a goal. And even though my goal of what ideally this would look like is much farther away from where I'm at now, because, because there's things I can actively work on right now that take me in that direction, it feels really exciting to be able to work on that. So yeah, I think that that's a big part with, with goals. And this, this is talked about by so many people, people who talk about making goals and reaching them is that you want to be able to have these really great goals that push you and makes you get better and you have to really challenge yourself but it's important to be able to have steps that you can break down and actually tackle and accomplish right now so that you're starting to work on that so so yeah i think it's a great idea to sit down analyze your work see what things you wish was in your style, wish you were able to create and then make a path that will take you there. So say if you wanted to have more stylization in your work, then some of the steps could be studying other artists that have style elements that you wish yours emulated a little bit more and start breaking down different artists, how they interpret things, how they take reference and then turn it into something more stylized. So. So yeah, there are so many ways that we can break down these steps into things that are so manageable and easy. And then once we figure out how to do one of those steps, we can move on to the next and make sure that we're always including those first steps and incorporating new things that we're challenging ourselves with. But I've also found that, and I know this might just be a personal thing, maybe not a lot of people experience this, but I've found that there are a lot of elements that I used to do stylistically that I love and that kind of got left in the past, I guess you could say. Not always intentionally, sometimes intentionally where I thought I wanted to go down a certain path. I went down that and then I never really reevaluated. And um, one of those things which I have kind of talked about a little bit recently is the way that I render hair. I used to do it much more complex with a lot of different shapes that were overlapping and twisting around each other. and. And I loved that. That was one of the elements of my style that I loved to create and I loved that it was present there. And I, I realized that over time I had gotten away from that for various reasons. So so yeah, I've been really trying to commit back to, to bringing that back to my style, bringing that back to the way that I work. That's what I really wanted to focus with this piece. I, I wanted to be able to take some time to focus on the face and focus on the hair and make those as fleshed out and detailed and complex as as I wanted in that moment. And one thing that I really, really want to incorporate into my work more, and it, it takes a lot more setup and effort, and I think that's really why it never ended up coming to fruition, but that's more specific and dramatic lighting for my work. I I want to be able to do it at least somewhat accurately. So, so to do that in a way that I'm happy with, I would need more references and more planning in the color comp phase and before I start painting it. So, so yeah, I've been trying to remember that these things are are steps that I want to take because I want my style to reflect that. I want to be able to look back a year from now or five years from now and see that that was a skill that I developed. And then, and then hopefully in that time, I'll be able to feel really comfortable with it and feel like I can easily control it and make it the way that I want. So for this piece specifically, I, I really tried to make sure that there was a strong backlight of of light on specifically her hair, the way that it was hitting it so that mostly her face was beginning to turn away. And then the other half of her hair was out of that really strong highlight. But I, I loved working on that. It made it far more dynamic to actually 
paint this painting because I had to think through it a little bit more. I couldn't just sit down and render the hair the same way from top to bottom, side to side, where it just all ended up being the same. And I, I liked that. I want to be able to embrace things that break me out of that uh, monotony of just sitting and creating without thinking. And I do have this original painting available at my shop. There's a link down in the description. And of course, I want to give a thank you to Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. And don't forget, if you're interested in getting that free trial to try it out and, and watch some of those amazing classes over there, make sure to follow the link down in the description. That is for the first 1000 people. So jump on that if you're interested. And uh, yeah, that is it for today. As always, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are incredible. I I absolutely adore you guys. You are amazing. Uh, but yeah, that is about it for today. So I'll see you guys at my next art video.